Hey everyone, it's Mr. Joelicious here and welcome to another quick stream tip video. Now, if you've been to my streams recently, you may have seen a new effect that I've introduced in them. Now, who doesn't like taking photos to remember important events in your life? Especially these days with instant cameras, it's very easy to quickly take a snapshot of something that is happening right in that exact moment. Now, I wanted to use that for whenever someone came in with a raid on my channel. So I created this effect to take a photo and write the name and date on it so I can remember the exact moment of the raid. Helicopter blades burring. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Hey, we're gonna raid! Look at that! Hi! <laughs> oh, that's so cool! <laughs> oh, hang on, hang on! Now, of course, just snapping a photo isn't enough, so I also put it in a digital photo album. Whenever a photo is being taken on the stream, it gets posted instantly to my Discord, so I can build up a collection of photos of every raid moment that I've had on my stream. Now, if you would like to create a similar effect on your streams, stick around because I'm going to show you exactly how you can set up it within OBS. Now, if you like this kind of content, please consider leaving a thumbs up, subscribing to the channel and ringing the bell so you get a notification whenever a new video is being put up. Now, without further ado, let's take a snapshot of this exact moment and let's roll the intro so I can show you exactly how you can set this up within OBS. Now, in essence, this Raid Polaroid effect is actually pretty simple, but you just need to combine a few things together in order to make it work smoothly. Now, for it to work properly, you're going to need to have a few things installed. First off, we're going to be using a couple of plugins in OBS, namely the WebSockets plugin, the Freeze Frame filter, Move Transitions filter, and Stream Effects. Now, I've covered plugins already in an earlier video, so if you don't know how to install them, please check that video first, so you're all set up for when we begin. On top of that, we're also going to be using the Yawn Board and two extensions for that, namely the OBS Quad Snap and the Current Time extensions. Again, I've already covered the basics of the Board in an earlier video, so check that out first if you don't know how Leon Board works exactly. Now, be sure to have all these things ready. I'll leave the links to everything in the description down below, and then we can move on to the fun stuff, and that is setting everything up within OBS. First of all, we're going to begin by making a new scene in OBS. OBS. Make a new scene in OBS and call it Raid Polaroid Scene. In this scene, we're going to build the actual Polaroid picture. Now, before we begin, be sure to have a Polaroid template ready. You can either make this yourself or you can go on Google and search for free to use Polaroid templates. There's actually quite a few there that you can choose from. Just be sure you can use it for your Twitch streams and give credit where needed. When you have all that, we're going to have to add a few sources to your newly created scene. The names of these don't really matter as long as you know what source does what. Now, you're going to have to add four sources, namely a text source for the Raider name, a text source for the date, an image source for your Polaroid frame, and a source mirror for your webcam. As you'll see in my setup, I'm using two webcams and I have another image for the background. If you're using a green screen, you might want to have a similar effect where you're using a background image of maybe your stream room or something else that you put behind it. So the Polaroid is actually being filled up other than just having a black background. But for this example, I'm going to assume that you're just using a regular webcam with just your room as a background. Make sure that your webcam lines up properly within the Polaroid scene so it's not sticking out anywhere. For the text sources, you want to pick a font and a size that you like and set a custom width and height so they can never extend past the Polaroid. When all that is set up, we're done for now for this scene and we can move on to the next one. The next scene is going to be the scene that's actually going to be triggered whenever a raid is incoming on your stream. Now, of course, you can set this up to your liking and to your style and theme of your stream. As you can see, I've gone with a blurred webcam on the background and a simple title at the top. You got the scene looking exactly the way you like it. It's time to add the magic of the Polaroid effect into this scene. First off, go ahead and create a new nested scene source. Here, you'll pick the scene we just created with the Polaroid. Since the move transition filter can't yet work with nested scenes, we'll have to add it to our group so we can animate it. Lastly, I created a simple countdown timer that I added as a media source that will count down for when the picture is to be taken. Of course, you can either do this yourself as well, or if you don't want that, you can just leave this. It's a completely optional step. But for me, I thought it added just a little bit extra. And well done, you've created the scenes and you set up the basics for this effect. Let's move on to the next part where we're going to add a few filters to make everything work. And most of these filters are going to make use of the Move Transition plugin. So right click on your scene and select Filters. Here we're going to add two Move Source filters. One for the position on screen and one for the position off screen. First, be sure to position the nested scene on the screen exactly the way you want it to be. I've rotated it slightly and centered it. When it's to your liking, select the nested scene group as a source and scroll down to the transform section and click get transform button. This should give you the value of the current transformation. Lastly, you want the saturation for the animation. In my case, I went with one second. And you want to set the star trigger to enable and disable. Next up, we'll duplicate this filter, but we're going to change the transformation values to be positioned off screen. So again, move the nested scene off screen where you like it, maybe rotate it and put it a little bit up or down and then click the get transform button to get the correct values. Now, when you enable either of these filters, you should see the animation happen on screen. If you see the animation happening, good job, you got it working. Let's move on to the next step. 
Next up, we're gonna go back to our Polaroid scene that we created earlier, and we're gonna add some filters to the webcam. Basically, these filters are gonna simulate the effect of a flash going off and then the Polaroid photo developing, just like an actual Polaroid does in real life. So right-click on your webcam source and select Filters. First of all, we're gonna add a freeze filter. This filter will create a freeze frame effect. Basically, that's the effect that's gonna take the photo. You don't have to change anything to these settings, but you should see the webcam is instantly frozen when you add it. Be sure to disable this filter for now. Next up, we'll add a color correction filter. Again, for this one, you don't have to change anything. Just leave it as is, but be sure to leave this filter enabled. Now for some fun stuff. We'll be using the move value filters to create the flash and the developing effect. So start by adding a move value filter for the flash. Here, you want to select the color correction filter and the setting for brightness. The value you want to set it to is one. For the custom duration, you want to set it to 50 milliseconds. Lastly, be sure to set the trigger to enable and disable and set the next move to reverse. Now, when you enable the filter, you should see the effect appear. Next up, we'll create a similar effect, but this time for developing the photo. So again, make a move value filter, pick the color correction and brightness and set the value to zero. For the time, I went with three seconds. And again, for the trigger, you want to set it to enable and disable. Now, when you enable this effect, you'll see that nothing happens just yet. The reason for this is that your brightness is still set to zero. So how will we fix that? Well, that's simple. Just add another filter that sets the brightness to minus one. So make a last move value filter, use the same settings as before, but this time set the value to minus one and the duration to 10 milliseconds. And we've done all that, good job. You've created the basics for this effect within OBS. Now we have to make sure that you don't have to manually switch scenes and enable all these triggers and filters. So we're gonna have to move over to Leo board so we can set up everything in there. So Leo board is gonna take care of everything for us and everything goes automatically. And we don't have to do a single thing except for pose for the photo. All right, so let's move over to Leo board. And again, I assume you know the basics of how Leo board works. If you don't, again, please check out my video on that first so you know where everything is in the tool. First of all, let's install the two extensions that we're gonna be using for this tutorial. First, you wanna click Install Extension, select the extension file, so go to your extensions folder and select the file that you wanna install. Select your transmitter, that's gonna be your TSL transmitter, which you should find in your main Leo and board folder. Now do that again for the second extension, and after that, we can actually move on and create the buttons and all the triggers. Now as you can see, the OBS Core Snap extension has also created a new deck. We're not gonna use that for now, we're just gonna go with a fresh deck. So either create a fresh deck or pick one that you've already in use. So for me, I'm gonna go with my Twitch triggers deck. Now let's start by setting the effect. I'll quickly go over all the settings here, so you can look at the window over there to actually copy most of them. Or if you want, you can download a JSON file over on my Discord, and then you can actually import that from here as well. That has all the actions set up in it already. You just have to change the names for the scenes and the various filters to the names that you've changed them. But I'll leave a readme file in that download for you as well. All right, let's have a look at all the commands. Now to start, I've created the commands to prepare some other things. First off, we have a send to extension command and then we pick the get current time extension from the list. Give it a variable name that is easy to remember and under this format, select date. After that, add a math trigger pool command with the value set to zero. Next up, we're gonna change the text GDI plus sources for both the radar and the date. So use this exact formatting with the variable name that you've said earlier in order to actually change the text to these variables. And then set the delay for these to one. All right, that's it for the preparation. Let's move on to the effect. I make a new command that switches the scene to your Polaroid scene. If you want to give the system some time to process the ray, I set that to a delay of five seconds. All commands after this are gonna have an increased amount of delay. The exact amount is up to you or the effect that you've set. For instance, the development filter takes about three seconds, so be sure to keep in mind that you reserve three seconds for that. But up to that, it's, up, it's up to you how long you want things to be on screen or how long you want things to last. After you've switched scenes, you want to bring in the Polaroid, so set a filter change visibility command and select your position in filter and set it to true. If you have a countdown, this is also where you'll enable and after the countdown is finished, disable that. Now to take the photo. Remember all those filters we added to our webcam? Here's where we enable all of those. We'll enable the flash, the freeze filter, and the development reset all at once. Then with a small delay, we also enable the development filter itself. When that is done, you probably want to leave the Polaroid on your screen for a little while before moving back to an intermission screen. So set your delay and make sure that you add around like 10 seconds from your last delay. Again, you can change this value if you want to have it on screen longer or shorter, depending on your taste. Now after that, we have to reset a few things. We have to move the Polaroid off the screen. And of course, we want to disable the freeze filter so the next time when someone comes in with a raid, everything is ready and set up for you to go. Also, you don't want to forget to add a Twitch trigger for when raids come in. I've set this up to a minimum of zero people and a maximum of 100,000 because basically you want to have every raid trigger this effect. And there's a little bit of a backup. I also added a chat trigger that only the broadcaster, namely you as a streamer can trigger. And you can use that for when, for whatever reason, the effect isn't triggered by itself. You can type that command into your chat and then you can trigger it manually. All right, so this is basically it for taking the Polaroid. But as we've said before, we also want to post it to our Discord. So in order to do that, we'll be using the OBS Cord Snap extension. Remember that extra deck that was made when we first installed the extension? Go to it and copy the channel point example button. 
So paste it in your Polaroid deck and then after that you can edit the commands for that button. I'm not going to go over all the settings here as the comments above it speak for, its, for itself. So be sure to follow these instructions for all these comments and you should be good to go. Also, before you do any of this, make sure that you have a channel set up in your Discord and you follow the Discord webhook tutorial that you can find on the GitHub where you actually downloaded this extension. Afterwards, also be sure to remove the Twitch trigger from this extension because we're not going to be using that. We're going to trigger it ourselves manually. And that's actually the last thing that we're going to have to do. And that is add a button trigger to our initial RAID Polaroid button. So first right click on the OBS cord snap button and note the button ID down below. Then add a trigger for the button towards the end of the commands just before resetting everything again. And make sure that you add the correct ID as well. Well, that was quite some work, but if you followed along correctly, you should have everything set up the way it should be right now. Now, of course, you want to try it out before you actually go live with it, but you don't want to wait before you actually get a raid. Luckily, there's an easier way for you to do that. Go to your Leon board installation folder and then open the Stream Deck application that you will find in the Stream Deck PC folder. Then select the board number where you just created your trigger buttons and hit connect. Then as soon as you hit the button, everything should trigger exactly the way that it should trigger also when it happens live on stream. And there you go. If you see all this, you know that you've set it up correctly and everything is working exactly the way as it should. And also, of course, be sure to check your Discord to see if the picture is actually posted there in the correct channel as well. And there you have it. That's it. That's how you can make a Polaroid effect for whenever someone comes in with a raid. Now, I think this is a very fun way to thank the people that send their community over to you and to actually remember these moments later down the line. Now, the idea that I have myself is to make a poster of all the Polaroids at the end of this year, kind of look back at all the raids that we've gotten in 2021. And again, to say thanks to all these people and to just remember most of these moments by. Now, as always, if you liked this video and it was helpful to you, please consider supporting the channel by leaving a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and ring the bell so you get a notification whenever a new video goes live. Now, if you decide to implement this on your streams, I'd actually love to see it and I'd love to see the customizations that you made to it in order for it to fit exactly to your stream. So feel free to share your creations with me either on Discord or of course you can share it also on Twitter and I'd love to have a look at them. And if you want to get a Polaroid picture for yourself, or if you just want to hang out with me in chat, I stream on Twitch every Monday, Wednesday and Friday. So feel free to come on by and say hello. And that's it. That's all for me today. The only thing that I have left to say is that my name is Mr. Delicious. You are all extremely delicious yourself as well. Thank you so much. Good luck with this. Happy streaming. And hopefully I'll see you again in the next video. Wow, this was an achievement. Okay, here we go. <laughs> I didn't I didn't know that. This is just me having fun with, <laughs> you know, this. <laughs>